Here at Real Vision, we're not exactly new to the crypto space. Over the next two weeks, we're gonna show you interviews with some of the most interesting people in crypto. Now, we've been on this story for almost five years now, and in that time, a lot of things have changed. There's been a surge in innovation and attention, a huge market crash, and then, of course, a lot of Lambos. So let's look at some of what we've unlocked in crypto over the last few years. You're gonna see it all in this special episode of Real Vision's The One Thing. What's going on investors, AK here. So we said we'd take you back in time, right? So let's go back to September 2014, a few weeks after Real Vision started. We find co-founders Raul and Grant sitting in a dark room talking about the death of trust in an episode called The Reset. That led to a discussion about how Bitcoin could be useful. Does Bitcoin have a place in this framework that you've established? I think it's almost central to the framework because of the nature of it being de decentralized. Therefore, nobody can manipulate it, nobody can control it, they can't print more of it. So what you have is something very intellectually interesting and actually very useful. So the case for Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies was pretty clear, even back in 2014. One of the people we interviewed for this week was Barry Silbert, but this won't be his first time on Real Vision. In fact, he was one of the first experts who was really able to dive into the details. This is what he had to say back in 2014. Bitcoin as a technology, um, uh, people are excited about the potential for not just payments and remittance and kind of this new way of moving money around the world, but the whole concept of this decentralized distributed trust system that eliminates, completely eliminates the need for any intermediaries, uh, any fiduciaries, any custodians. Uh, and we're talking about the potential for a complete revamp of our financial system. This piece was called The Destructive Power of Bitcoin. And in the five years since, Silbert has been spot on about the disruption. Despite the volatility that came with that disruption, Bitcoin and other currencies have grown immensely. Cryptocurrencies as a whole had a market cap of 5 billion back in late 2014. Today, they have a market cap of 250 billion. That's a 5,000% increase. And along the way from five to 250, they made a stop at 750 billion in market cap. That's a 15,000% increase. Along the way, we had Tour de Meester, one of the first guys in the financial finance research world to talk about Bitcoin as an investment. I'm known as the first financial newsletter writer to recommend Bitcoin as an investment back in 2012 with a price of $5. I called the top in Bitcoin in late 2013 at $1,100. We had a bear market that ensued and then uh, last August at $250 I became bullish again. Demeester was an early adopter, and as cryptocurrencies continued to gain legitimacy in the finance world, institutions started to take notice. In 2015, the CEO of the crypto VC fund Pantera Capital, Dan Moorhead, explained why he left the macro hedge fund world to start a crypto fund. Here's what he had to say. My true passion was always investing in disruptions, whether they were glasnost uh, in Russia or technology in the States. Anytime there was a big disruption, I, I researched it and tried to uh, invest in it. And Bitcoin is the biggest and most compelling disruption I've seen in my career. And so I've decided to put um, all my energies into investing in Bitcoin. So the disruption was so big that successful hedge fund managers were drawn out of traditional finance and into crypto. But disruption is deceptive and not everyone is a bull. John Dwyer joined us in 2016 to give us the bear case for Bitcoin. The other thing that people should understand is that there's a notion of a 51% attack. So if you have control of 51% of the Bitcoin network, 51% of the power of the network for the miners, and this is pretty well understood, mm -hmm. then you take control of the network. And therefore, Bitcoin as a network loses integrity. The problem with that is all you need to do to do that is have sufficient financial capital to control 51% of the network and an ideology that you want to disrupt the network. Bitcoin isn't perfectly secure, which is why some people have a hard time trusting it. But then again, most computer networks are more vulnerable to hacking and manipulation than you might think. Still, crypto's value is undeniable, despite the persistent issues and challenges. Assigning concrete value to crypto assets is a whole different ballgame, though. Here's Nick Colas discussing how hard it is to value these things and how he looked at the risk-reward ratio in 2017. It's a venture capital type of investment, a venture capital type of trajectory. And venture capital works in one of two ways. It either works spectacularly well or it fails. And we all know that most venture capital fails. So we have to attach some probabilities to that as well. And that's why Bitcoin being only a fraction of total currency outstanding makes some sense because there's a very good chance that cryptocurrencies, particularly this 1.0 version that we're seeing now, won't be what we eventually end up with. And so all of these currencies, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, all the Bitcoin spinoffs 
might end up going in the trash heap, but the eventual technology development will still be robust. There'll still be a lot of growth in cryptocurrencies generally. So I look at it as a very high risk, potentially high reward, venture capital style payoff investment versus something that can be put into a traditional asset class. Okay, so there seems to be some consensus that cryptocurrencies have value, but the question is always how much? And nobody can seem to agree on that. I mean, just look at crypto's price chart. But what if they're widely adopted? What could the implications of that be? Charles Hoskinson, one of the co-founders of Ethereum, explains what the potential changes could be from crypto adoption. And he talks about the potential legacy of crypto technologies. So now what we've done is we have taken a person where they're Financial life is determined by geography, and we've now put them in the driver's seat of their financial life. They get to make the final say about their portfolio and how they store their assets. And by the way, every single one of these assets are gonna be secure, they're gonna be well accounted for, they're gonna be free of fraud or a lot more resistant to fraud, they're gonna move at the speed of light, you're gonna be able to buy and sell them at a fair price, and there's no longer a, a siloing effect that occurs where your equities live here and your bonds live here and your currencies live there and your commodities live there. They're all just treated as the same under the same type of protocol and they flow just as fast as email. If we can accomplish that by 2030, I think that the cryptocurrencies will have become the greatest innovation of the last 500 to 1,000 years since the invention of banking and the invention of the printing press. And that'd just be an amazing future to live in. So yeah, the future does sound great, but it's gonna take a lot of building to get there. Part of the adoption of these technologies is building services and products that will be used in everyday life. Whether you're sending money across borders or just trying to buy some ramen at 3 a.m. Maxine Ryan talks about why the adoption of these crypto assets might take longer than what was thought. We can never predict what's gonna happen in the future. Um, I think that people who are very idealistic will be like, well, everybody will be using Bitcoin. Um, you can go to Starbucks and you can pay with Bitcoin, all this type of stuff. But there is a learning curve uh, to Bitcoin at the moment. Meanwhile, Dan Moorhead and Joey Krug of Pantera Capital joined Real Vision to talk about regulation and how individuals might interact with crypto technologies in the future. Krug talks about how institutions may not be part of the new cryptocurrency infrastructure. Here's Krug's response about whether or not he'll be able to hold his crypto wallet in a retail account. My opinion anyway is, is you know, probably not. I think we probably will see sorts of things where like you can buy into an ICO on an alternative transaction facility or something. But I don't think we'll see them on like you know NYSE or Nasdaq, at least not not any anytime soon. Um, just because I think they're, they're such weird assets, they're kind of so idiosyncratic and they're all very different and so unique that it's really hard to kind of categorize them in any sort of box. Regulation and consolidation are crucial factors to widespread adoption. Demeester came on again in 2019 to talk about where he thinks the market is now and where it's going. Uh, to me, this is the accumulation phase where value investors, they come in and, uh, and, and the weak hands uh, hand over their Bitcoin to uh, the strong hands. Um, there's incredible amounts of development happening. Uh, we are seeing more regulatory clarity, obviously, because you know, we're seeing this cleanup process in, in the market happening, which is very positive. We're seeing way uh, better custody solutions. We're seeing uh, insurance happening. Just all kinds of things that you want to see for Bitcoin to become big and boring is, is happening right now. And I think that's what's setting up um, the, the basis, building the basis for uh, the next big rally in the markets. If you look at this chart of the total market cap of cryptocurrency since 2010, the picture becomes clear. Over the last decade, you could have made and lost a fortune speculating and investing in these crypto assets. And despite all this noise around crypto, you still gotta be careful because it's the wild west. There's con men, hucksters, and all sorts of things. Whether you think Bitcoin and crypto assets are the future or not, understanding them will help you with your process regardless. If you want help identifying value, cutting the BS, and adding cryptos to your portfolio, then stick with us at Real Vision. I'll talk to you next week.